Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how we can insert checkbox to a queue table widget. So by incorporating checkboxes in your queue table widget, we can add another layer on how we can store the information. All right, so here's the demo. Uh, inside this uh, window, I have a push button on the top and a queue table widget uh, right below the push button. And I inserted the checkboxes in column one. So basically, uh, when we select the checkboxes, let's say I select uh, row one and row three. If I click on the push button, it's going to print the values associated to uh, these three items plus the items in row three. And that's basically uh, the feature we're going to implement uh, in this video. All right, so here let me insert my code snippet. And it's going to be uh, QD6. And fortunately, uh, we're not going to import uh, many libraries. All right, so for uh, this exercise, I'm going to import Q push button, Q table widget, Q table, oops, widget item, and Q checkbox. And for the layout manager, let's stick with uh, Q for the code box layout. And from the Qt core module, I'm going to import the Qt class. All right, so here uh, let's start by inserting the push button. Actually, not inserting, uh, creating the push button. And I'll name the push button self.btn. And I'm going to insert the text. Oops, retrieve values. And I'll add the push button to the vertical box layout. Next, we're going to create the table widget. And I'll call the uh, table widget self.table. And for the uh, table dimension, let's do three rows, uh, three columns. And so let's take a look. So here's our initial setup. So for I in range, so let's do for row in range. You'll have three rows, followed by a column. And here I want to say that if column divided by three, and if the remainder is equals to zero, they want to embed a checkbox uh, to the cell. So here I'll reference the Q table widget item class. And for the uh, cell value, let's just insert the uh, cell position. All right, so I just realized something. We don't actually need to use a uh, Q checkbox class because uh, Q table widget item already has a, a checkbox functionality embedded. All right, so to uh, display the checkbox from item dot set flags, we want to reference the QD class dot item flag, and want to set the uh, cell as item is user checkable, and we need to enable the uh, flag. So here I'll reference the QT dot item flag dot item is enable value. Then I'll set the uh, default checkbox state to uncheck. So this will be qt dot check state dot uncheck. Then I'll insert the Q table which item to the table using the set item method. Then we'll provide the cell location. Otherwise, we are just going to insert the value where the checkbox. All right, now let's take a look. And here I'm getting uh, the get attribute. Uh, oh, this should be uppercase U.
All right, so here's our window. So here's my uh, push button, and here's my uh, checkboxes. In form to increase the uh, checkbox indicator size. So here, uh, let's do that right now. All we can do here is we can we can implement a CSS style sheet to the uh, self dot table object. All right, so from the self dot table object. I want to insert the set style sheet method. And to uh, reference the checkbox uh, element or property, I want to reference the Q abstract item view class. Colon, colon, indicator. Then we can uh, modify the property. I want to change the indicator's width and height. And let's set that to 30 pixels. All right, so let's take a look. And it's a little too big. And the indicator is uh, overriding the text. And to fix that, we can uh, shift the, the text a little bit. So here, let's reference the Qtable widget class. And it's going to be colon, colon, followed by item. And I'll set the width to 500 pixel. And for the height, I'll set that to 40 pixel. And I'll fix the uh, formatting issue. Sure, I feel like the indicator is too big. Let's do 25 pixel. Okay, that looks much better. Now we have the interface created. Now we need to uh, create the method to retrieve the values. And here, let's uh, name the method retrieve checkbox values. Inside the function, we want to uh, iterate each row. So we can say for row in range. Then we can reference the uh, self dot table object dot row count to return the uh, total rows. Then I want to insert if condition if self dot table dot item. And given the uh, cell location, I want to uh, check against the first column. Followed by the check state. I want to say that uh, if this statement is equals to qt the check state the check. Then I want to print all the values uh, within that row. So what I can do here is I can uh, insert a list comprehension. And first, let's get the uh, count count from the self dot table object. And I want to say for column, giving the range from the count count. I want to create this. So it's going to be self dot table dot item, and this will be a uh, row position, then column position, dot text. Then I'll assign this method to the push button click, uh, click signal. And that's it. All right, so let's do a test run. Uh, if I launch the application, let's see. Oh, I forgot the closing parenthesis. All right, so let's do a test run. So if I click on the push button, uh, I should expect nothing is going to get printed because uh, nothing is checked. Now I want to retrieve the value of uh, row number two and row number three. Then I'll click on retrieve values. And that should give me uh, the list 
associated to those two rows. And here we can see that we have item 10, 11, 12, all the way to uh, 22. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to share in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys on the next video.